Good morning everybody on this Palm Sunday that we are streaming live from the rectory this morning as our churches are still locked. So I hope this finds you all well this morning. Um, we've got some technology so do bear with us as we have our readers prepared um, from a pre-recording. So before we continue our worship this morning Let's just hold a moment's quiet and just pause and reflect upon this day as we begin our Holy Week together. Hopefully you will have your orders of service to hand, so please do join me in, in the bowl. Hosanna to the Son of David. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Behold, your king comes to you, O Zion, meek and lowly, sitting upon an ass. Ride on in the cause of truth and for the sake of justice. Your throne is the throne of God. It endures forever. And the scepter of your kingdom is a righteous scepter. You have loved righteousness and hated evil. Therefore God, your God, has anointed you with the oil of gladness upon your fellows. Hosanna to the Son of David. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Grace, mercy, and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you. Amen. Amen. My dear brothers and sisters in Christ, during Lent we have been preparing by works of love and self-sacrifice for the celebration of our Lord's death and resurrection. Today we come together to begin this solemn celebration in union with the church throughout the world. Christ enters his own city to complete his work as our saviour, to suffer, to die and to rise again. Let us go forth with him in faith and love, so that united with him in his sufferings, we may share in his risen life. Some of you may have made a palm cross. I know Bertie has. So if any of you have got a palm cross or you've made a palm cross, please do now hold it high and I will now bless your crosses. God our Saviour, whose Son Jesus Christ entered Jerusalem as Messiah to suffer and to die, bless these palms that they may be for us signs of his victory and grant that we who bear them in his name may ever hail him as our King and follow him in the way that leads to eternal life, who is alive and reigns with you, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. We now have our Palm Gospel. Hear the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew. When they had come near Jerusalem and had reached Bethpage at the Mount of Olives, Jesus sent two disciples, saying to them, Go into the village ahead of you, and immediately you will find a donkey tied and a colt with her. Untie them and bring them to me. 
If anyone says anything to you, just say this, the Lord needs them, and he will send them immediately. This took place to fulfill what had been spoken through the prophet, saying, Tell the daughter of Zion, Look, your king is coming to you, humble, and mounted on a donkey, and on a colt, the foal of a donkey. The disciples went and did as Jesus had directed them. They brought the donkey and the colt, and put their cloaks on them, and he sat on them. A very large crowd spread their cloaks on the road, and others cut branches from the trees and spread them on the road. The crowds that went ahead of him and that followed were shouting, Hosanna to the son of David. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest heaven. When he entered Jerusalem, the whole city was in turmoil, asking, Who is this? The crowds were saying, This is the prophet Jesus from Nazareth in Galilee. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise mm. to you, mm. O oh Christ. Christ. And now the collect for Palm Sunday. Let us pray for a closer union with Christ in his suffering and his glory. Almighty and everlasting God, who in your tender love towards the human race sent your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ, to take upon him our flesh and to suffer death upon the cross. Grant that we may follow the example of his patience and humility and also be made partakers of his resurrection through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. And Jim will now read our first reading. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. The servant of the Lord said, The Lord God has given me the tongue of a teacher, that I may know how to sustain the weary with a word. Morning by morning he wakens, wakens my ear to listen as those who are taught. The Lord God has opened my ear, and I was not rebellious. I did not turn backwards. I gave my back to those who struck me, and my cheeks to those who pulled out the beard. I did not hide my face from insult and spitting. The Lord God helps me, therefore I have not been disgraced. Therefore I have set my face like flint, and I know that I shall not be put to shame. He who vindicates me is near. Who will contend with me? Let us stand up together. Who are my adversaries? Let them confront me. It is the Lord God who helps me, who will declare me guilty. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our psalm is Psalm 31, and the refrain is, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? My God, my God, why I have you, you forsaken, forsaken me? Have mercy on me, O Lord, for I am in trouble. 
My eye is consumed with sorrow, and also my throat and my belly. For my life is wasted with grief, and my years with sighing. My strength falls, fails me because of affliction, and my bones are consumed. My God, my God, why my have God. you forsaken me? I have become a reproach to all my enemies, and even to my neighbours, a dismay to those of my acquaintance. When they see me in the street, they avoid me. I am forgotten like the dead and out of mind. I am as useless as a broken pot. My God, my, my God, God, why have, have you, you forsaken, forsaken me? me? For I have heard the whispering of the crowd. Fear is all around. They put their heads together against me. They plot to take my life. But as for me, I have trusted in you, O Lord. I have said, you are my God. My times are in your hand. Rescue me from the hand of my enemies and from those who persecute me. Make your face to shine upon your servant and in your loving kindness save me. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? And now for our second reading. A reading from the letter of Paul to the Philippians. Let the same mind be in you that was in Christ Jesus, who, though he was in the form of God, did not regard equality with God as something to be exploited, but emptied himself, taking the form of a slave, being born in human likeness, and being found in human form, he humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Therefore God also highly exalted him, and gave him the name that is above every name, so that at the name of Jesus every knee should bend, in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks we be to go. God. We will now have the reading of the Passion Gospel by Reverend Brian McHenry. This will be followed by a, a, a time of silent reflection for which there are some pictures that we can reflect upon. The Passion of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew. Now Jesus stood before the governor and the governor asked him, Are you the king of the Jews? Jesus said, You say so. But when he was accused by the chief priests and elders, he did not answer. Then Pilate said to him, Do you not hear how many accusations they made against you? gave him no answer, not even to a single charge, so that the governor was greatly amazed. Now at the festival, the governor was accustomed to release a prisoner for the crowd, anyone whom they wanted. 
that time they had a notorious prisoner called Jesus Barabbas. So after they had gathered, Pilate said to them, Whom do you want me to release for you? Jesus Barabbas or Jesus who is called the Messiah? Pilate realised that it was out of jealousy that they handed him over. While he was sitting on the judgment seat, his wife said word to him. Have nothing to do with that innocent man, she said. For today I have suffered a great deal because of a dream about him. Now the chief priests and the elders persuaded the crowds to ask for Barabbas and to have Jesus killed. And the governor again said to them, Which of the two do you want me to release for you? Barabbas, said the crowd. Then what should I do with Jesus, who is called the Messiah? Let him be crucified, said the crowd. Why? asked Pilate. What evil has he done? The crowd, even louder, said, Let him be crucified. So when Pilate saw that he could do nothing, but rather that a riot was beginning, he took some water and washed his hands before the crowd. He said, I am innocent of this man's blood. See it to yourselves. The crowd shouted out, His blood be on us and on our children. So Pilate released Barabbas for them, and after flogging Jesus, he handed him over to be crucified. Then the soldiers of the governor took Jesus into the governor's headquarters, and they gathered the whole cohort around him. They stripped him and put a scarlet robe on him, and after twisting some thorns into a crown, they put it on his head. They put a reed in his right hand, and knelt before him and mocked him, saying, Hail, King of the Jews! The soldiers spat on him, and took the reed, and struck him on the head. After mocking him, they stripped him of his robe, and put on his own clothes, and then they led him away to crucify him. As they went out, they came upon a man from Cyrene, named Simon. They compelled this man to carry his cross. And when they came to a place called Golgotha, which means place of a skull, they offered him wine to drink, mixed with gall. But when he tasted it, he would not drink it. And when they had crucified him, they divided his clothes among themselves by casting lots. Then they sat down there and kept watch over him. Over his head they put the charge against him which read, This is Jesus, the King of the Jews. Then two bandits were crucified with him, one on his right and one on his left. Those who passed by derided him, shaking their heads. You who would destroy the temple and build it in three days, they said, save yourself. If you are the Son of God, come down from the cross. In the same way, the chief priests also, with the scribes and elders, were mocking him. The priest said, he saved others. He cannot save himself. He is the King of Israel. Let him come down from the cross now, and we will believe in him. If he trusts in God. Let God deliver him now, if he wants to, for he said, I am God's son. Now the bandits who were crucified with him also taunted him in the same way. From noon on, darkness came over the whole land until three in the afternoon. Then at about three o'clock, Jesus cried out with a loud voice, Eli, Eli, Lema Sabachthani. That is, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? When some of the bystanders heard it, they said, This man is calling for Elijah. And one of them ran and got a sponge, filled it with sour wine, put it on a stick, and gave it to him to drink. But the others said, Wait, let us see whether Elijah will come to save him. Then Jesus cried again with a loud voice, 
and breathe his last. At that moment, the curtain of the temple was torn in two, from top to bottom. The earth shook, and the rocks were split. The tombs also were opened, and many bodies of the saints who had fallen asleep were raised. After his resurrection, they came out of the tombs and entered the holy city and appeared to many. And when the centurion and those with him, who were keeping watch over Jesus, saw the earthquake and what took place, they were terrified and said, Truly, this man was God's son. This is the passion of the Lord. We now have our intercessions, led by Reverend Perry Butler. Let us make our prayers to God our Father. And to the phrase, let us pray to the Lord. Respond with me, Lord have mercy. As we meet at the beginning of Holy Week, we stand with Christ in his suffering. For grace to overcome sin and our share in the sin of the world, for growth in holiness, both as individuals and as a community, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord have, have mercy. mercy. For the world at this time, for those who suffer from the coronavirus in any way, for those isolated and alone, for those in sickness, 
fear or grief for all those seeking to help and overcome this suffering. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord have, have mercy. mercy. For our nation, its leaders, both at national and local level, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord have, have mercy. mercy. For all who feel weighed down with hardship, failure and sorrow, that they may feel the presence of God with them and the support and encouragement of those around them, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord have, have mercy. mercy. For our families, friends and neighbours, and especially for those who have been commended to our prayers, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord have, have mercy. mercy. For all who have died in faith, and those whose faith is known to you alone, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord have, have mercy. mercy. For ourselves, in our particular needs, that what we are not, you will make us. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord have, have mercy. For a strengthening of our faith in the communion of saints, as we join our prayers with Mary, Mildred, Peter and Dunstan, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord have, have mercy. mercy. Holy God, holy and mighty, holy and immortal, have mercy upon us. Amen. Amen. And now for the peace. Once we were far off, but now in union with Christ Jesus, we have been brought near through the shedding of Christ's blood, for he is our peace. The peace of the Lord be always with you and, and also with, with you. you. Let us offer one another a sign of Christ's peace wherever we may be at this time. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. A reminder that we are the body of Christ and I receive today on behalf of each and every one of you on this Palm Sunday Eucharist. Blessed are you Lord God of all creation through your goodness we have this bread to set before you which earth has given and human hands have made it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness we have this wine to set before you. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become for us the cup of salvation. Blessed be God forever. Let us pray. Jesus, true vine and bread of life, ever giving yourself that the world might live. Let us share your death and passion. Make us perfect in your love. The Lord be with you and also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. It is indeed right and just 
our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Jesus Christ our Lord. For as the time of his passion and resurrection draws near, the whole world is called to acknowledge his hidden majesty. The power of the life-giving cross reveals the judgment that has come upon this world and the triumph of Christ crucified. He is the victim who dies no more, the lamb once slain who lives forever, our advocate in heaven to plead our cause, exalting us there to join with angels and archangels, forever praising you and saying, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. All glory be to you, our Heavenly Father, who in your tender mercy gave your only Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ, to suffer death upon the cross for our redemption, who made there by his one oblation of himself once offered a full, perfect and sufficient sacrifice, oblation and satisfaction for the sins of the whole world. He instituted and in his holy gospel commanded us to continue a perpetual memory of his precious death until he comes again. Hear us, merciful Father, we humbly pray and grant that by the power of your Holy Spirit, we receiving these gifts of your creation, this bread and this wine, according to your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ's holy institution, in remembrance of his death and passion, may be partakers of his most blessed body and blood, who in the same night that he was betrayed, took bread and gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way after supper, he took the cup and gave you thanks. He gave it to them saying, drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Great is the mystery of faith. Christ, Christ has died. Christ, Christ is, is risen. Christ, Christ will come, come again. again. Therefore, Lord and Heavenly Father, in remembrance of the precious death and passion, the mighty resurrection and glorious ascension of your dear Son, Jesus Christ, we offer you through him this, our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. Grant that by his merits and death and through faith in his blood, we and all your church may receive forgiveness of our sins and all other benefits of his passion. Although we are unworthy through our manifold sins to offer you any sacrifice, yet we pray that you will accept this, the duty and sacrifice that we owe. Do not weigh our merits, but pardon our offences and fill us all who share in this holy communion with your grace and heavenly blessing through Jesus Christ our Lord, by whom and with whom and in whom, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honour and glory be yours, almighty Father, for ever and ever. Amen. Amen. Lord Jesus, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be, be your done. name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. 
give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Every time we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Grant us peace. Jesus is the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. Blessed are those who are called to his supper. Lord, I am not worthy to receive you, but only say the word and I shall be healed. Let us pray. Lord Jesus Christ, you humbled yourself in taking the form of a servant in obedience, died on the cross for our salvation. Give us the mind to follow you and to proclaim you as Lord and King to the glory of God the Father. Amen. We say together, Almighty God, we thank you for feeding us with the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him we offer you our souls and bodies to be a living sacrifice. Send us out in the power of your Spirit to live and work to your praise and glory. Amen. The Lord be with you and also with you. May the Father who so loved the world that he gave his only Son, bring you faith to his eternal life. Amen. May Christ, who accepted the cup of sacrifice in obedience to the Father's will, keep you steadfast as you walk with him the way of his cross. Amen. May the Spirit, who strengthens us to suffer with Christ, that we may share his glory, Set your minds on life and peace mm. and the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son and the Holy Spirit be with you and all those that you love and pray for, for this day and always. Amen. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord in the name of Christ. Amen. Amen.